thank you to Waterwheel Little Horse for their generous donation on Patreon. Hello everyone! My name is Vivian and welcome back to the Smoke Room! It's been a minute, it's been a fucking minute, but uh, we are back with a William update. I last left off, I believe, asking you to give me your input on which route, which choice you want me to choose. And so I am going to now, I haven't looked at this in a while, it's obviously been many months. So it looks like the last episode of William's Route was episode 19, Revenge of the Misses. Shut up, me. Commodore named Proto says, quote, Heads up! The writer of this route has said that this choice is the beginning of a series of choices that could lead to different endings. In this case, they said that this was one of the, quote, easier choices, where three out of the four, three of four are good for William himself and one isn't. They're planning on playing everything and see, uh, so they'll see on which is what. They said their personal favorite was to remind him of his breathing because they found it difficult to imagine what they would even say to a friend admitting having contemplated suicide other than remind them that you're there for them th uh, through a hug or something. Really didn't like saying it was noble because he just bared his fear and feelings to us and how it was destroying him on the inside and we essentially told him that it was a good thing. Really felt like he closed himself off again after just opening up when he said thanks for bringing him to his senses. Alright, so that is one vote for remind him of his breathing. I don't remember which of these choices is which. Razmataz says that they think the best option is reminding him of his son and wife. How if it wasn't for him, his son wouldn't be here, bringing him back to his senses that he has a son now grown up that he hasn't seen in years. Magic Guy 38 says, dude, awesome voice acting. Oh, thank you. Um, you think the option, uh, option one is the best one. I don't remember which one is that, but I assume it's one of the first ones there. Counted says they vote for reminding of a heartbeat. That's two, two choices for that. Uh, as a choice to make, it's a show of uh, support from Samuel and has William act the most accepting and open of his sexuality, which he has clearly struggled with all his life. In comparison, I think telling him to basically be a martyr for his family is unhealthy, as it has already proven to be true once. So, right, that, that's two vo votes there. Ace Ayasaki thinks that the, the third or fourth one is pretty reasonable, but the first one might have a deeper meaning. Sometimes, though, visual novels tend to have to go through the hard end to get the perfect ending, so there's a possibility for the second one to be correct as well. I guess I'll go with my gut and go with the third or first option then. Just, you just fucking choose all of them, why fucking don't you, Ace? Fangirls between three and four, but only because they were hilarious and smutty while still playing it cool and almost hard to get. I appreciate your vote, but uh, we'll see. Oh, we got a bit of a... We got a bit of an insider here. User Deadly Flood says, Alright, so I know you made a joke about this, lol, but the second one is the only, quote, bad choice according to the game's code, so go with any of them other than that one. <laughs> nice. EJ de Torres thinks that the first choice is the best option. And finally, Inugami the Hound gives a breakdown. One is nothing, two is duty, three is selfish, and four is hard choice. They say, I think nothing is the best one because it seems like both William and Samuel enjoy it. Duty is a good choice out of all of them, but it don't, doesn't push the relationship further. And selfish is funny, and William is much more lighthearted, and the final choice is hard choice. Uh, is really bad in their opinion. Well, it kind of breaks everything if we go with... <laughs> well, at least we know we've we've ruled out the second option, whatever that one was. A lot of people were saying the first one is good, reminding him of his heartbeat. Um, got a few votes for the third one. No one really voted for the fourth one. I think maybe there was like one in there, but like... It certainly sounded like the majority was saying the first choice, which is the heartbeat, and a couple were the, for the third. So, 
I'm going to go with the first one. And what? I thought this was a William update. What? What the fuck got updated then? I checked all the other routes. Oh, maybe it was a Nick update. Did I go through all of that mess? And it turns out it's a Nick update? And I just misremembered? I swear to God. Yeah. I fucking... And slip away. Yeah, I fucking God damn it. <laughs> Went through all that mess. At least we'll know what we're doing next time. Or, when, or whenever the William route gets updated. As for now, it's time for the Nick route. Rowdy voices wake me up. Whoa, I don't want self voicing. Thank you. The sound of clanging pots, ruffled sheet, ruffling sheets, and slamming metal lockers make my head throb. My shoulders ache from the night on the hard mattress, but I manage to drag myself out of the bed. The few surprised glances from one of the men, but no vocalized greetings. I hear many different accents and simple phrases in my broken language. Nick and Yao were already dressed and collecting tools. You're awake. I was worried. We have to start our shift soon. You remember where the hiring office is? Of course. I'm quarry. My memory's not that bad. You're hurt, so it could be. He pulls me into a tight hug that could break me in half if he wanted and claps me on the back. I wish I could be there with you. Oh, he's got blushing! Blushy boy! <laughs> Nick's got feelings! He's got all the feelings. It was easy the first time I did it. Just come to me if you run into trouble. We'll see you at lunch. Alright. So we're off to the employment office. I don't see why they're so worried. I've had a job interview before. At this company, even. Then again, it has been two years. I didn't know we used to be a miner. Maybe things have changed much more than I remember. The fancy-looking office at the top of the quarry is as neat as I remember it. Oh, boy. The young secretary, who looks like some kind of pole cat, gives me a look. Mr. Eyes for 10.30, I presume? Yes, ma'am. She picked up a telephone with one hand and slid the rotary dial. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's him. Yeah, I know that... Yeah, I know that he's early. Well, okay, then. Her eyes narrowed and she tilted her head. You can go in now. Ah, uh, thank you. The needle-eyed secretary doesn't answer and goes back to pounding the keys on her typewriter. Oh, look at this fancy-ass office. When I enter here, the office is mostly how I remember it. A large desk separates the small room in half with bookshelves on either side. On my side, there's a stool to sit on. On their side, two comfy armchairs. On the left is a man who I'm starting to get used to seeing, James Hendricks. To the right is a sharp-eyed hound I'd never seen before. He's an uncomfortable kind of gaze. Oh, by the way, I, uh... I kind of got a schooling. I don't know if I've mentioned this in an episode. Uh, I kind of got a schooling. This is, like, long after the stuff with uh, John Begay. This is, like, a different James Hendrix. This is, like, his descendant or something? Uh, I haven't looked into it uh, recently because despite everything that's changed, the one thing that hasn't is uh, the my lack of preparation going into these things. But yeah, this is a story totally independent of that whole mess. Let's go on with this gaze. The scrutinizing, scrutinizing kind that doesn't blink enough. Swell of you to show up on time, Samuel. The most important part of a job is always keeping your commitments. That's funny. 
I don't remember telling this man my name. That's very true, sir. Mr. Hendricks will do. That dour-looking soul over there is Mr. Briggs, my partner and the co-owner of Danica Mines. I expect the other man to laugh, but he doesn't. I don't feel familiar with either of these two, so I just nod. He tells me that you worked here before. You have a file. Okay, we got a new person. Don't know his voice, so... I'll be conducting this interview. Last time I applied for a mining job, I interviewed with the secretary. I was given an assignment packet and conditions, and what I earned was fairly cut and dry. These two men are the owners of the biggest mine in the state. Something isn't normal here. Samuel Ayers, age 23, 1913. Born in the Magnolia State. No felonies. Compliant, but consistently did not maintain his own equipment. Physically fit, but hesitant to take on a challenge. Let me ask you, Mr. Ayers, were you happy here? Another day, another dollar, Mr. Briggs. Now there's a positive attitude. The hound's lips go tight and form a sideways smirk as he tilts his head. Now you see, Mr. Ayers, that's not what I asked. And if you don't answer what I ask, we're going to run into, the, into problems sooner than or later. I asked you if you were happy. Which is another way of asking, were you grateful? You see, we have people from all over the world who would love to work here. Immigrants from every coast. From the Orient. From Europa. The Southern Lands. Hell, even one from the jungle I'm willing to bet. We're the first line of supply to building a new world, Mr. Ayers. So if that doesn't make you happy, you might want to just walk out the door like you did two years ago. So if Yao's plan works, that means we're gonna rob this motherfucker. It puts a smile on my face. Now, now, Mr. Briggs, a blunt edge can cut the fur, but it's a razor that... T what? That tidies the scruff. Okay. <laughs> Y'all know what I read that as. I don't even need to go forth. You're close with the immigrant Nikolai, yes? Stuck at the hip, one could say. Is he now? How does he know that? never met this man until yesterday. Mr. Ayers, one of our current troubles is that Nikolai is one of our best workers. But I fear he's run away with some wild ideas. Unfair, unfounded ideas, I must add. It would make his life so much easier if he was to rein those thoughts in. Or... To have somebody encourage him to. I think you would be uniquely suited to that role, yes? Somebody's been spying on me. Enough to know what I do and what I do for Nick. But apparently not enough to know the worst thing I've done. Somebody from the hip, then. We're all good men who just want to work for what we're given. Nick's not the bo boat rocking type. I can talk most nonsense out of him. Do you support labor unions of any kind? I don't know what a union is. That doesn't matter. Do you intend to support any labor movements in the future? I couldn't say. Joining any labor union is grounds for immediate termination. So why haven't you fired them yet? He looks up at me. There's a probing look. But then he smiles again. I wasn't under the impression that you were given this interview. <laughs> that you were given this interview? Oh, shit. He looks down again at the contents of my folder. Will you purchase and maintain your own equipment if employed here again? Um, 
I would be happy to cover those costs. Let's just call it a hunch that this is a good investment. Everything's in order, then. Down slaps my folder on the table. Deliver this to Miss M What, are you okay? So oh, Jesus, slapping folders? I'm... Oh, gosh. Do it, do it for the sound effect. Slap it. Okay, um... Yeah! Yeah! Deliver this to Miss Miranda. Will you start tomorrow? Well, damn. Guess that went well? I follow their instructions, handing this new folder to the eagle-eyed secretary in the entryway. She replaces some of the papers, hands me back the folder, and tells me to keep it and read it to prepare for tomorrow. Somehow, walking out into the blazing heat, the afternoon sun scorching the back of my neck feels less oppressive than that office. Oh, what the fuck? I hear the high noon gun go off and I make my way back to the bunks. Oh, I guess that's just a normal thing. Okay. Back to the bunkhouse. Nick and Yao were, are there before me, sitting at the small kitchen table, dipping their spoons into bowls of watery stew. Nick meets me with a smile. Did you run into any problems? It's like drowning in my lips. Nope, they hired me. I hold the large folder up and slap it with the back of my paw. Where's that folder? I gotta slap it again. But this time with the back of my hand. There you go, with the back of the hand. Let me get all up on the mic here. Oh, I kind of hit the fucking... Hold up. There we go. That's that's the... I'm beating the shit out of some poor person's shit. The badger chuffs and snatches it away, snatches it from me, open it up to look it over. Yao looks over his shoulder. Nick's face fell. Hey! What? They put him with us? So they did. Yao mutters something under his breath, and I, but I catch it. I don't know what that means, and I won't even venture a guess. Don't I have that thing? Okay, so a couple fucking years back, there was this feature where with Translate, you can, yeah, you can use your camera. Luxembourg, I don't think that's Luxembourg, dude. Okay, so it's not working. I pulled up Translate. And you're supposed to be able to, like, point your camera at text and it'll, like, translate it, or at least as best as it can do. But, uh, it just wouldn't do it, so never mind. Whatever the fuck that says, woofta. He's not ready for that kind of work. I've hauled a few carts around here before. They'll expect you to detonate explosives. Or construct scaffolding. It can't be that hard, can it? You don't say that to fucking miners. Your job can't be that hard, right? You know the thing you're sacrificing your entire lives for? Thing that took you away from your homes? Oh boy. If you do anything wrong, that could cause a cave-in. And it could kill us all. However, misfortunate choices aside, if he learns how to work with explosives, we'll have another man know how to extract the ore. He only has to do this for one week. We can ensure that he isn't forced to do anything reckless. But it is not sensible to place him there. What would inspire them to? I think I know. Oh, both of them look at me. Well? Why, then? I bring my fist to my face and clear my throat. Both Mr. Briggs and Mr. Hendricks interviewed me for this job. Both of the bosses? Interviews are lower management grunt work. Something is not right. They asked me some stupid shit, like if I plan to join a union. As if I even know what a union is. Both of them look back, look at each other. And Hendrix seems to know about us. 
Nick. What things? Who I am and what I do. The tiger looks scared. He knows what happened to Jack. What? N no! No. A surge of relief spreads across his face. Then what are you both talking about? Nick sends me a look like he would deck me if I didn't shut my mouth right now. But I know he wouldn't, because it's Nick. The effect gets me to clam up regardless. It would seem that my days of working here are numbered. That may not be the case. Mr. Hendricks seems to think that you're one of his best workers. I think he might think that me being around would uh, would keep you from leaving. Which would mean that they may, he may not know about our plan. I'm starting to feel frustrated whenever this tiger interrupts me. Just shut him down! Ah, uh, no. <laughs> no, he's fucking... He's helping us. Leave it, let him alone. I the back of my neck and sigh. Is something wrong? No. Well, actually... You know, Nick keeps telling you things about me without even asking. And the two of you are up to TP something without letting me know that what it is. That it is. Good lord, two typos in one sentence. In spite of the fact that it's clearly that it clearly involves my participation a good deal. It's just too similar to other situations I've been in before. You know? Perhaps I'm making too much of a fuss. Tiger tilts his head and looks from me first, then to Nikolai. You have not been debriefing him. <laughs> Nick looks embarrassed. I told you earlier that I did not want to overwhelm him with details. He will only be further overwhelmed if he does not know what he is doing and why. Friend. Samuel. Samuel. I will not rely on Nick as your messenger. I will speak with you directly from now on. Considering you are one of us now. Who's us, exactly? The men who meet at the stag. The, the, the fucking what? The who? He's talking about our work organization. The Union? Yes, the Union. Ain't that suspicious? As you have confessed, the bosses are already suspicious of you. They have openly revealed to you that Nikolai's aff affiliations, there we go, are known, which means that his job security and his safety are jeopardized. Unless we apply pressure. Pressure? Push it down! <laughs> Push it down, are you? No, asshole. <laughs> You're an asshole! <laughs> the other men need to know and plan for us. Join in a union specifically the one thing they told me not to do. You will find that if you always follow what your bosses tell you to do, you won't last very long. But nobody will make you join a thing. It is likely that you already know some of these men, Sam. It may not it may not seem suspicious to be drinking with them. Yeah, his tail twitches as he looks between the two of us, as if he want, as if he was still trying to put something together, but couldn't. I am confused by the manner of your association. But if you want to have my full trust, then show yourself at the stag at 7 p.m. tonight. He stomps over to his bunk, snags a piece of paper, and scribbles on it. Here is the address. I will return to work on my own. I do not like this. That's perhaps for the best. I can only hope that I have not attracted suspicion as well. The tiger doesn't waste time leaving. Weary of him already, Sam. Oh. You're the one who knows him. I get the sense you feel conflicted about him. 
I'm ashamed to admit this is how I feel. But I do not want you to feel emboldened by his rash ideas. Yao can pull off many things others cannot. And if you tried to be more like him, well, that would just do no good, would it? Gee, thanks for your confidence, Nick. But even so, he always sticks his neck out for me. Even when he doesn't have to. Maybe it's because he knew you could ro he could rope you into something like this. I would have done I would have done the same for him if I found gold. I never really pinned you as a criminal. And I can say the same thing for you. But I do not think of myself in that way. We should not have to do these things to survive. But if anybody could succeed at this, I believe it is Yao. But you... You already experience a great deal of guilt and suffering. You do not have to be a part of this. I know. But I know that I saw something in those minds. You were upset. Yao knows there's something down there too. Like what? I don't know. I think it's something unnatural. He grabs me up by the wrist again. Sam. Couldn't even move away from him if I tried. Do you really think anything could hurt me if it wanted to? Bitey bitey. <laughs> He's like, Squirrel! Squirrel ghost! I'll get you ghost <laughs> Maybe if it snuck up on you in the dark, or if it's not a person. You're worried for me? That is what this is. They said your name, Nick. I know why they docked your wages. They don't like you. And they're not and they're making you do all this dangerous stuff. All the while there's there's God knows what slithering around down there. Some kind of monster. You take me in and hold me, and I lose you money. And now you put yourself back in a job that you hated. Can you not see how guilty this makes me? I just want to protect you. Why? You are the one who needs protection! We're up against the wall he's heaving, and his temper has made him feel hot. I have never once felt frightened below the ground. But I have felt frightened, thinking any time I hold you can be the last time. Because you need to work. And I need to find somebody I do not have to pay to hold. Or find some way to pay to hold you forever. Pay you what you really are worth. Not with pennies. Damn! <laughs> His name is Nick. <laughs> His eyelid is squeezing out a tear. His grip around my wrist is so tight that it hurts. When I grab his arm with my free hand, it slackens. I hook my arm around his waist, letting him know that he doesn't have to hold back. So he doesn't. He leans into me, tilting his head to wrap his jaw his jaw around mine? Jesus Christ. He snarls when his tongue laps at mine inside my own mouth. Good lord, they're they're not even hiding, they're in a group bunkhouse, just fucking Mac in Return of the Mac style. Return of the Mac Return of the <laughs> <laughs> Return of the <laughs> Return of the <laughs> Can't help but rumble too Like we're fighting Like he's the first person I've ever met That has the capa capability to overpower me Or anybody who'd try to hurt me and he wants me to know it. 
but he ends the kiss with a smack, still panting. I have to go back to work now. So you do. We stand together, panting, both aching from the strain on our trousers. We have to let it die down. It takes me several deep breaths before I can get soft and a drop of... Yeah, okay. You'll be at the stag tonight, yes? Of course. All right. See you then. My arm hangs loosely when he lets go of my hand, leaving the shack. I figure it's high time for me to go too. 